Welcome back to another video on how I'm making a transistor computer right now. So pretty much we already made the ALU, we already made the D latch register, and now in this video you'll see how I combined them together with a certain little circuitry so it will work properly. Like I said before, there's not too many videos on how to build a transistor computer with breadboards. So I kind of want to make this series in case anybody has to do this project. Um, it's all good. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. Your tank. No, I can just edit it. Okay, so this is the circuit for the clock. Um, sorry the background noise, my 3D printer is on, but this is how it works. So every time there's a input from the button, it's going to add a number by one, just like a clock. So every time the signal goes high for the button, it adds one to a number, and this is the hour hand. So four bits of information can hold all the way up to 16 digits, or 16 number values. And so that's why it's four bits, so we can go up to at least 12 for the hour hand. And then light clocks, they only add one, so I don't need to add anything else that's fancy. So we have, this is the ALU. Um, we talked about the ALU in the other video. This over here is the D latches. So that's how we save the information. And then this, we'll get to this in a second. This um, allows me to connect the ALU directly to the D-latch um, for timing issues. So we don't run into any timing issues when we try to save the information. But let's go into a demonstration to see how it works. So this is a demonstration to show how it works. So we already have one is pre-programmed to turn on every time the voltage goes from low to high or when we get power. So if I press the button, one plus one is two. And then when I press the button again, two plus one is three. And if I press it again, three plus, plus one is there, three plus one is four. It didn't work on that top. Um, and then four plus one. Five. Five plus one is six. And then we have seven and eight. So it takes a little bit for it to load, which I could fool with the timing to make it easier, but it works. And since this button will only get pressed every 60 minutes to add one to the hours, um, it's not that big of a deal that the timing takes um, like three seconds or 10 seconds for it to load in. Now let's go ahead and talk about this, just in case anybody else wants to make a transistor computer or something similar. So there's probably a better way to do this, but this is the way that I came up with it and it works. So this is the D latch, we made a video about how this works. So go watch that if you need to. But if you connect the D latch directly up to the ALU, it doesn't have enough time to save the new digit in memory. So it just flickers. So if, you, if it's the one digit is on, so one plus one will give you two. And then as soon as you release the button, it like, it resets it. So we need a delay circuit so it can remember the number, wait three seconds, and then send the output. So that is basically what I have to make. And that's why I use this little delay circuit with the capacitors and the resistor. So the output of the D-latch will go into the delay circuit. It's gonna wait X amount of time. And then it's gonna send the output to the ALU for it to compute it. And the ALU is gonna send the output back into the light. So that is basically how this works. These transistors right here act as diodes. Um, I don't have any on me, but a transistor is pretty much just 1.5 diodes. Um, so got that. And then these are uh, 220 kilovolt, okay, kilo ohm resistors. And this is a, give me a second. Look at it. 22 unifarad uh, capacitor. So 
gives me about 10 seconds, 10 to 5 seconds of time to delay the circuit. This is how the delay circuit works. So we have the input, which is just a high voltage source. We have a resistor, which is 47 seven kilo ohms. Uh, and then the input is connected directly from the resistor. And then the resistor on the other end is connected directly to the output. And the capacitor, which is in parallel with the output is connected to ground. So when I press the button, it takes a few seconds for the light to light up which is exactly what we need because when the d latch holds the value, it's going to take a few seconds to output it to the ALU so the lights can all change. Because once the light changes, that high voltage input is not going to the d latch anymore and it, can, it doesn't know exactly what to store. But with the delay circuit, it knows what, what to store. And then the timing of the delay circuit it can be found by multiplying the ohms of the resistor by the fair or unifarads fair or by the farads of the capacitor my bad and so that's basically how it works so this is the output of the d-latch takes a second and then it sends the output directly to the alu it's a little dark here but got a 3d printer printing the base or the main frame for the transistor computer and yeah once it's done i'm gonna attach it make another video too and that's it for this video um so next video, we're going to add all of the main components onto the little frame that I'm 3D printing right now. Um, then future videos, we're going to add the minute circuit. We're going to add, yeah, we're going to have to make a new ALU to compute the minutes, a new register for the minutes, and then a new um, delay circuit for the minutes too. And then we'll also have to make a clock chip, which will set a pulse to high every um, 60 seconds. So that's gonna work too. We also need to make a chip to reset the clock um, once it hits 60 for the minutes and once it hits 12 for the hours. If you wanna know how I made this uh, circuit or what the schematics kinda of are, you can go look at my previous videos. I have one where I made this whole circuit in a simulation about two months ago. And then I have a, another one where I go into depth about each module for the computer. And then it resets.